Good morning, and welcome to this third Sunday of the Epiphany season. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit. Make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The beginning of the Galilean ministry. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, pro proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nests. nets. Immediately Jesus called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In today's gospel, Mark tells us that it was John the Baptist's imprisonment by Herod that caused Jesus to step forward into his earthly ministry the ministry his father had given him, the one he'd been preparing for as he grew up in the care of Mary and Joseph, working as a carpenter, but knowing all the time in his heart that there was a huge task ahead of him. The time had come for him to choose his team, and he searched, not in the synagogue among the rabbis, the most learned men at the time, but on the lakeside, among the fishermen who had much less formal education, but more practical experience. I wonder if any of you remember Clarence Smith. I had the honor of speaking at his funeral. He was a fisherman on the East Coast and I loved to hear his stories. He's the only fisherman that I've ever known. He was strong, brave, patient, a man of prayer, who put his life in God's hands, fishing in the rough water. I'm sure these were the traits that Jesus was looking for in his team. He was laying the foundation stones for his kingdom. And where did he begin? With ordinary men. Jesus loved ordinary people, and he still does. Every Sunday is here with us. He knows each one of us intimately. There's a line that we say every week in the opening prayer that always stops me in my tracks. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. No secrets are hidden. He knows everything about us. He takes great joy in choosing and preparing an ordinary person and filling them with his Holy Spirit and his power. As we say each week, God can do more than we can ask or imagine. Look what he did with Simon Peter, the fisherman, who preached an amazing sermon on the day of Pentecost. And the woman at the well, who told everyone that she had met Jesus, the Messiah. Look around here at St. Andrews, and you will see God at work. Jesus said, in effect, give me 12 ordinary men who will give their life to me and let me show you how I will change the world. How many of us, me included, say, 
I'm not worthy. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to share my faith. We mustn't dwell on who we think we are or what we think we can do, but on what Jesus can do by working through us. Let's look for a moment at Mark, who's the writer of the gospel that today's reading is taken from. Mark was Barnabas's nephew, and his mother's house was used as a meeting place for the early believers. He accompanied Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey, which unfortunately did not end well for Mark, who left and went home when Paul arrived at Perga and decided to journey inland. The reason Mark left is not clear. Perhaps he was afraid of the bandits on the road. Perhaps he didn't approve of Paul taking leadership, feeling Barnabas was being pushed into the background. John Chrysostom, writing in the 4th century, wrote, Possibly, he missed his mother. He could have been a teenager at the time and become homesick. Whatever the reason, it had a devastating effect on the relationship between Paul and Barnabas. When it was time for the next missionary journey, Barnabas wanted to include Mark, but Paul absolutely refused. As far as we know, they never traveled together again. Paul obviously thought that Mark had failed. However, many years later, when Paul was at the end of his life, he asked for Mark and said that Mark had been valuable in his ministry. So God had caused reconciliation somewhere along the way, again, doing more than we can ask or imagine. Mark also wrote this very special gospel, the first one written, and the one that shows us a lot about Jesus and his ministry. I really do encourage you to read Mark's gospel. This could be part of your Lenten discipline. You will find in it an urgency to share the good news about Jesus. Many times we hear in Mark the words immediately and straight away as he describes events. But let's return now to the lakeside. As Jesus chose the men for his team, he simply said, follow me. And they did. This probably wasn't the first time that Andrew, Simon, James and John encountered Jesus. More than likely, they'd been in the crowds listening to him. Perhaps they already felt drawn in. Jesus simply said, follow me and I will make you fishes of people. This is the crux, the center for all of us to follow Jesus. It's our relationship with our Savior in our hearts that plants that seed of love, that blossoms into the compassion for the lonely and the poor and the sick, that drives us to want to help as we can, drives us to reconcile with each other, drives us to pray, and makes us so thankful for the blessings that we have received. It's not about a church denomination or how we worship. It's about who we worship, one God and Father of all. There have been many times in the retirement homes when people have said to me, I'm a Roman Catholic, I won't come to your service, or I'll come, but I won't receive communion. My answer is always the same. All are welcome at our service and to receive communion. That means a lot to them. Just last week at Kingsmere, an Italian lady, a Roman Catholic, expressed how grateful she was to be able to receive communion and to sing and to pray with us. We all worship and follow one God. Will you come and follow me if I call your name is a hymn that fits perfectly with this gospel passage. And it's one that has meant a lot to me during my faith journey. It was sung at my ordination almost 10 years ago now. The hymn was brought to my attention when I was first discerning a call to the deacon ministry. Glenn and I were at Crowhurst, Christian Healing Center in England, when I had a meeting with a spiritual director. I shared with her, her that I felt a call to preach. I didn't see how this could happen, as I was nervous 
of public speaking. It was verse four of the hymn that she referenced. Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? With God, everything is possible. As Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 19, verse 26. Will you come and follow Jesus when he calls your name? Let us answer his call. Join his team and follow him so closely that we reflect his light. May the light shine so brightly from St. Andrew's Church that people come in to find out who we follow and who we love and serve. Amen. May Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with us on the, the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out our hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open our hearts to love. May we see the face of Christ in everyone we meet and may everyone we meet see the face of Jesus in us. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.